going to shortly what? Come to pass. I have also spoken by the prophets and have multiplied visions and used solemnitudes or likenesses by the ministry of the what? Prophets. So in other words, God in Bible prophecy uses a horse to describe what? Go back to Joel. Turn quickly, saints. We've got a lot to cover. We've got to cover it quickly. Joel. Joel. Are you in Joel chapter, chapter 2, verse 2? All right. Now, in this day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, what's going to rise up? A great people and a what? Strong people. Verse 4. How does God describe these strong people? Like what? Horses. Now, notice what it says here. Uh, they're like horses. So what symbol does he give to describe these, these, these great people? Horses. That's that symbol. Solemnitudes, likenesses. According to Hosea chapter 12, verse 10. Are you with me? Are you with me? Amen. So let's look at verse 5. Like the noise of what? Chariots on the tops of mountains. Shall they what? Leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, a strong people set in what? Battle away. So in other words, these horses or these people are ready to do what? What do we see in Zephaniah was going to take place? And what do we see in, in, in Joel was going to take place? War. We've already discovered the war is going to take place at, on cities and against towers. We connect these events through history. We look in history and see can we find it. We see it in this date right here. Are you with me? So we see a people ready for battle. Notice what happens here. So they're ready to have war. Is that correct? Huh? Amen? Notice what happens in verse 11. Look at verse 11. And the Lord shall utter his what? Voice before his army. Can God use non-Christian people to do a work for him? Did God use Nebuchadnezzar? Yes. Can he use non-Christian people to do a work for him? Doesn't mean that he believes their doctrine, but he uses them for his judgment. Are you with me? Amen. Underscore that word, the voice before his army. Now, let's look at the horse. Go to the book of Revelation. Here, this is all review, new to some, review. This is review, but new to some. Revelation chapter 9, Revelation 9, quickly. Revelation 9, turn there. Let's track this symbol of horses so we can find out who this great people are. Verse 7, do you have it? 9, 7. Revelation 9, 7. Talk to me now. I need the engagement. Revelation 9, 7. Notice what it says here. And the shape of the locusts were like what? Horses. Horses. Uh-oh, let's stop there. What's another symbol of these great people? So they're also referred to as horses, but they're also referred to as so they have more than one symbol to describe this great people, right? Are you with me? I'm trying to make it clear. So there's more than one symbol. Is, is, can God do that? Can he use more than one symbol to describe a great people? Yes. So this great people is not only described as horses, they're also described as locusts. Now, let's find out something. Where do they come from? Look at verse 3. Verse 3. And there came, out, there came out of the smoke, what? Locusts upon the earth. Where does the locust come from? No. No, where did they come from? They came out of the good stew. That's my son that said that. They came out of the smoke. Where did the smoke come from? Out of the pit. So scripture gives us two derivatives. It gives us two areas, two locations of where these locusts come from. Now remember these horses and locusts are symbols of what? 
a great people. And it says, a great people that, and it has not been a great people like this since it was, and it will never be a greater people after this. So it's a lot of people. Are you with me? And they're strong people. These strong and great people are symbolized as what? Horses that symbolize as what? And they're ready to do what? Battle. And we found out that the battle took place on what date? And it, it, it focused against the, and the, all right. Now, let's look at the two symbols, pit and smoke. Are you with me? Turn to the book of Genesis quickly. Repetition deepens the impression. Turn to Genesis, Genesis 37, and let's look at verse 20. Let's find out where the location of the pit is. Genesis 37, verse 22, 22. Do we have it? I'm teaching today. Verse 22, And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this what? Pit that is where? Where is the pit located? In the wilderness. Where did the locusts come from? Out of the pit. That's out of the smoke, right? The pit is in the? All right. Mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So if the pit is the wilderness, the smoke has to be also connected with what? Because that's where the locusts come from, which are also referred to as? Good, good. This board is really helping. Song of Solomon. Turn with me. Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon. I'm trying to make it so clear that even a child can understand it. Song of Solomon. Chapter 3, verse 6. Do we have it? This is the proof text method. The Bible says comparing spiritual with spiritual. Who has Song of Solomon 3, 6? Do we have it? The Bible says, who is this that cometh out of the what? We want to know. Like pillars of what? Smoke. So does the pit is located where? What comes out of the wilderness? Smoke. What comes out of the smoke? Locusts. Let's review. Bottomless pit is open. Where's the pit located? What comes out the wilderness? What comes out the smoke? Locusts. So where are the locusts derived from? Where did they come from? They came from the? Did that go over anybody's head? Now remember, can I just quote it? If, I, if, this, if, this need, if you need help, we can go back. Remember, Z uh, Joel, it says the Garden of Eden is this great people. What's behind them? The wilderness. All right? So these locusts come from the wilderness. So who is this people that come up out of the wilderness? Let's ask the question. Do you think the Bible has the answer? Does the Bible have the answer? Turn to Jeremiah with me. Who is this people that cometh out of the wilderness? Jeremiah chapter 3. Turn there with me. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 2. Jeremiah 3, 2. Give you time to get there. Jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 2. If you have it, let the church say amen. amen. Lift up thy eyes unto the high places, and see where thou hast not been leaned with, in the way hast thou set for them as the who? Arabians, Arabians where? Arabians. In the wilderness. Do you know the modern name of the Arabian people? That's modern Islam, brothers and sisters. The Arabian people come from the wilderness. That's modernized Islam. Are you with me? Now, let's see something here. We have a war against the cities and the high towers, right? Is that clear? Uh-huh. And then we, we discovered that this took place on this what? 
date. Who's connected with it? A great people, right? This great people had to come from the wilderness, and they had to also make what? War. We said that Joel says these people are ready to do battle. So did we see the Islam people connected with the events of September 11? Did they not make war on the Twin Towers and on the cities? And they say that we've made war, we've made jihad. That's what they say. That's holy war. Their, 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 their motivation is that the whole world should be Islam, that the whole world should not be preached to and taught to from the Bible, but from the Quran. Did you catch it or did you miss it? So, brothers and sisters, we know that Zephaniah leads us up to what date? 2001. Are you on the same page with me? Raise your hand so I can see. Amen. Amen. Now, let's go back to Zephaniah quickly. Zephaniah. What is going on during this time period, or at least during this event? God, it lets us know what God is doing and what she, we should be doing. We have, have identified a date. So that means that this event, something is happening with God, right? And, and then God is letting us know so we can respond. So what is God doing during this time period? He tells us in verse 12, Zephaniah 1, 12. What is he doing? And it shall come to pass at that time that I will do what? Search Jerusalem with what? Candles. And do what? Punish the men that are settled on their leans that they and that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. What is God doing since we identified the event? At least from that event, we know God is doing something. Jerusalem represents the church. Remember the trumpet is blown in Zion, the church, Jerusalem. Jerusalem, which is called the city of truth. So God is now doing something with the church. He tells us that he has a candle in his hand. He is walking through the church. Is that what the Bible says? He's searching. He's searching with Jeru searching Jerusalem. Listen, listen, listen. It says, it, and it shall come to pass at that time. What time? We need an event. What event? This event. I'm about to go in the direction that I meant to do it another time, but I'm going with the Spirit. Is that all right? He's searching Jerusalem with a candle. Does the Bible ever talk about God searching? Does the Bible, and, and as I look and think, the Lord said, yes, my son, turn to Jeremiah 17. And I said, I hear you, Lord. So, so follow with me as the Lord led me. So I turned to Jeremiah 17. He said, I'm searching. I'm like, what do you mean you're searching, Lord? Because the saints ain't going to believe me. They're going to think I'm, I'm, I'm making some stuff up. They're going to think that I'm this crazy and fanatical stuff. They're not going to believe this here. I got people I know that's going to rise up against me for saying this. But I can't, I can't contain it if it's true. Jeremiah 17, eh? 9 says, the heart is what? Deceitfully above what? All things and desperately what? Wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, searches what? The heart. I try the what? Reigns. Even to give every man according to his what? Ways and according to what? The fruits of his doing. In other words, brothers and sisters, if he's searching the heart, is he searching the heart of dead people? He's searching with candle, Jerusalem, not the grave. That means he's judging the living since this date. 
And the people say, no, he ain't judging that. That's fanatical. They making this stuff up. He ain't since 9-11. The ju- we're still in the judgment of the dead. The judgment of the, of, of the living don't take place until the Sunday law is passed. I used to think that, but no. Probation closes at the Sunday law. There has to be an investigation before the Sunday law is passed. The saints. Nobody told you that you live in a time of the investigative judgment of the living. And the church says, listen, uh, uh, he's not going to do good. He's not going to do evil. He ain't judging us. But the Bible says, I, God said personally, I am searching Jerusalem with a candle. And I'm searching the heart. I'm searching your heart. Searching your heart. Out of mouth of two, witness, uh, two or three witnesses, let every word be established. The book of Ezekiel chapter 34 confirms the very thing. Ezekiel 34. Turn there quickly. Ezekiel 34. Verse 11. Ezekiel 34, verse 11. Listen, listen. You got to leave, leave, but I'm going to preach. Because let me tell you something. This is, this is present true. Listen, listen. Like, like we need to be praying after this is over with. Verse 11 of 30, uh, Ezekiel 34, 11, For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, have both what? Search my sheep and what? Seek them out. Did God say he's going to search Jerusalem? Does the Bible refer to us as sheep? Yes. Verse 12, As the shepherd, who is the shepherd? Jesus is the great shepherd. Goes on to say, as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among. Ooh, there's a day when God is among his sheep. We found out there's a time in which he's going to search Jerusalem with candles. And, and Zephaniah gives us an event. He doesn't give us a, 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 a time. He gives us an event. He says, when you see the towers fall, when you see war with these great people against the fenced city, that's your event. Who am I searching after? The time has come when judgment must begin at the house of God. If it first begins with us, what should the end be of them who don't obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the sinners appear? Brothers and sisters, he's starting with us. Seventh day Adventist Christians that know the Sabbath, that know dress reform, that know health reform, that knows all these wonderful truths that's going to make us back in his divine image. And during this time, during this time, we should be weeping, doing the porch and the altar when we should be praying. We watching X Factor. We're trying to figure out who's going to dance with the stars and win when you're about to lose your soul. I've been telling you for years I've been preaching. Telling you to let go of stuff. Let it get rid of stuff. I'm telling you the time is now. Search out his sheep. Verse 12, look, as the shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are what? Scattered. Israel is scattered. The lost sheep of the tribe of Israel. We lost. We love the same thing the world loves. We dress the same way the world dresses. We eat the same thing the, the world eats. We do Exactly like the world. God sees us as lost. And he says, look, I want you to be saved. So I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. I'm telling you that the destroyed angel is about to fly over. Put your blood on the doorpost. I'm telling you the angel is coming, flapping his wings. He's been flying. And when he comes, he's going to set a mark. 
on somebody. The Bible says when he's going to do it. Notice what he says. Verse 12, he gives us time frame. And as the shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he's among his sheep that are what? Scattered. So will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered. When? In the cloudy and dark day. Uh-oh. There it goes again. He's doing it right now, Jeremy. Michelle, he's doing it right now. He's picking and choosing. Is, any, is he being partial, particular? No, he's saying, I'm saying, pick me, Jesus. Pick me. Is that the desire of your heart? To be picked by Jesus? Is he going to pass over? Not because he can't save. His arm is not too short that he cannot save. But your sins have separated you. Ephraim is given over to his idol. Let him alone. Let him alone. They want their idols. I'm trying to gather. They want their idols. But praise the Lord. There's some sheep out there. And you know what, saints? I hate to say it. Even among us, a little group. It may not be all of us. Matter of fact, I just don't think it's going to be all of us. Is it because God can't save? No, because you know what I'm seeing? I'm seeing in the time when God is seeking his sheep, I'm seeing us still, still doing the same stuff. Stuff that we should have had major victories over at this time. We still running with the footmen. Did you hear what I just said? If the footmen weary you, Jeremiah says, how are you going to contend with horses? Did you catch that or did you miss it? Jeremiah is marking out different time frames in history. We're living in the time frame of the horses. The horses is a symbol of Islam. And if you are living in the time of the horses and you still, you, ain't, you didn't make it right with the footmen, how are you going to make it with the swelling of the Jordan? How are you going to make it when the floods come? Beat against the house. And you put your house on sand. We got to make a decision. He said, in what day? The cloudy and dark day. I want you to look at it again because I want it to fuse in your head. When is the cloudy and dark day? Go to Zephaniah. You read it, but you're going to read it again because I want you to recognize that I'm not lying to you. Zephaniah chapter 1. Verse 15, that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation. Does these terminologies even apply to 9-11? Because I want you to know that all of these events and all that takes place expands and grows as we go to the end of time. Does that make sense to you? So in other words, it gives us a starting point, Doc. But the events of this date will be perpetuated until the Lord comes. Pretty soon, and when Jesus comes, what's going to happen to all the cities? Well, so desolation will not be just localized. It's going to be what? Everywhere. So this is just a model of the end time. Distress, 
wantonness and desolation, a day of what? Darkness, gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. And verse 12, it and it shall come to pass at that time I will search what? Jerusalem with candles. When? In the cloudy and dark day. Ezekiel 34. Did you catch it or did you miss it? Notice what the people say. Verse 12, the Lord will not do what? Good or will he do what? Evil. Notice what it tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. God is searching. God is looking. The Bible says, verse 14 of Ecclesiastes 12, for God shall bring what? Every work into judgment and every what? Secret thing, whether it be what? Good or whether it be what? Evil. God is searching out the secret place. Where is the secret place, brothers and sisters? The heart. But, but, but Jerusalem, the church, doing this time, is saying, God's not going to do what? He's not going to do? And God is saying, I'm going to bring every work into judgment, every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Yes, I'm going to do and respond to good and evil. I'm going to give man, every man, according to his works. Let's go back. Let's go back to Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 12. Zephaniah 1 and verse 12. What it says, says, let's look at more detail here. It says in verse 12, and it shall come to pass. At that time I will search Jerusalem with what? Candles. Notice what he says over in verse, 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 uh, 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 verse, verse 7. Look at verse 7. Are you with me? Verse 7 it says, Hold thy what? At the presence of the Lord. For the day of the Lord is what? At hand. Is this the same time frame? He's still talking about what? The day of the Lord. He says, for the Lord has prepared what? A sacrifice. He has bid his what? His guest. And it goes on. Verse, verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the what? Lord's sacrifice, that I will what? Punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with what? Strange apparel. He beckons his what? Yes. And some of those in the church are still going to have on what? Strange apparel. During the period when God is bidding his what? Yes. You ever read anywhere in scripture that God bids his guests? Huh? I, I, my mind, as, as a concordance, goes to the book of Matthew. And, 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 I, and I, I'm a, the Holy Spirit just took me there, and I took, went to Matthew 22, and I want you to go there with me as God started piecing this thing together for me. He said, don't worry about what men say. Don't, don't worry about what men believe. You preach what I tell you. Twenty-two ten. You know the story of the marriage. It says in verse eleven, verse ten. So those servants went out into the what highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both what bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with what guest. Verse eleven. And when the king came in, and when the king came in. I repeat, and when the king came in with his candle, when his king came in searching out his sheep in the cloudy and dark day, when the king came in, he seeth the guest and saw there a man which had not on 
a wedding garment. Verse 12, and he said unto his friend, God is so polite, even with sinners, even with those who are going to be lost. He's never cruel or hard. 